everybody, AmpRepairGuy.com, also HarbachElectronics.com. Please like, share, and subscribe. So, I wanted to say one thing. Someone made a comment. I have a lot of coffee mugs all over the place. The coffee mugs hold screws for each amp that I'm working on. Um, I'm not sloppy with coffee mugs. They're, they're actually serving a purpose. They keep the screws in one spot for me so I don't lose them. So, I worked on this amp about eight years ago been working great. Um, customer said he overdrove it and he saw a flash. So this uses a 36800. This is a 2 meter amp. So I started to diagnose it. Disconnected the mill and plug. Turned it on. High voltage comes on. No problem. I checked components first before I did that. and Came on. Um, customer never changed the electrolytic caps. But again, light comes on. If you watch my old video on this, I I had recommended it and he just never never changed them so anyway so uh, they're still working but they are old so okay anyway so he overdrove it I'm assuming he he most likely flashed the tube so I also noticed something else I this is not my work so there was a piece of some sort of electrical tape on one it was like a plastic cellophane type, weird tape, color tape. Uh, so I had put this Dow key relay in here and uh, you know, so these black wires that I originally installed were connected right to the coil. So he doesn't remember what's going on with that. So I, I don't know what, what's going on. So uh, I'm gonna take this out, unsolder this, take it out and make sure it's still operating properly because if if that failed and he put that in, uh, he put the output into an open while driving it, that could have caused the tube to flash also. So I want to roll that out. And when I first fixed this, I had changed the, the low voltage transformer right here and I put a fuse in series with it because before uh, it was protected by the circuit breaker on the front. And obviously that breaker is way too big for, for you know, protecting the, the small transformer. Um, so, uh, this transformer has the plate windings on it, and also the with the filament winding. So, okay, so I'm gonna get to work. I believe it does. Let's see. Yes, it does. Okay, so I'm gonna get to work, and I will. Be back with a update. And since, well, one thing, this is a uh, since this is a three six eight hundred tube. There's a delay. It's an indirectly heated cathode tube, so there's a delay before it allow you to key it. So um, I'm gonna make sure that is functioning properly, also, because if you were to bias the tube on before the delay, the tube will flash. Okay, so I'm gonna get to work. See you guys in a bit. Stay tuned. So here's the Dow relay, the coaxial relay. So solder work not done by me. Let's see, it's about to break off. So I used my ohmmeter between the common and the normally closed. See continuity, manually engage it, and I have continuity between the common and the normally open. I'm going to check the coil. Put 12 volts into it. Make sure it's working. Make sure the coil's good and that it's uh, pulling this in. Okay, so the uh, coax connectors were loose, so someone definitely had this out, and there was no way to get to the uh, the other connection without taking it out. So I don't know what that's about. Hi. Right, so I'll get. To, I'm gonna get back to work. See you guys soon. Stay tuned with the Henry 2002A. So this was an interesting project. I don't like, I don't like, actually I shouldn't say that, I, I really don't want to take in amps that people have gone into and or have uh, you know, had crazy stuff done to them. So the customer, I didn't know, he said he overdrove it, I assumed it was just with his radio come to find out and mistakes happen I've made mistakes so no one's perfect so I'm not saying anything bad about the customer he's a nice guy so 
he overdrove it with another amplifier, another two meter amplifier. So, um, also didn't know that that um, he had pulled the tube out. You know, I I didn't know there, there were other things that were done. I'll go over it when I have the cover off. So, um, come to find out, he had put a Chinese tube in it, and that's what flashed. He sent along another tube, an iMac, um, which I didn't know was the original tube, and he. Uh, the, the, some of the pins were bent. I carefully straightened them, and um, oh, it was a pain getting it in. So when he changed the tube, the uh, strip line output network, uh, one of the straps was actually uh, way out of whack. So I did my best to tune it according to the manual. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to show you it working, and then I'll go over everything it did. So, radio's on f frequency, area he likes to talk, got a 1KW slug, proper one for the, for that frequency, yep, audio hello, 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 audio hello, 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 audio hello, hello, I got it set to 600 watts, audio hello, 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 an older tube, audio hello, 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 audio hello, 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 and it works as it should, so I'll let it cool off and then I'll show the inside and show you everything I did. Okay, see you soon. Show the higher voltage setting. Audio, hello, hello, hello. Audio, hello, 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 hello. I'll be back. Covers off, I'll show you what I did. So, this is the adjustment I was talking about. I adjusted it per the manual's instruction. Basically, it's just a screw that pushes down on this Teflon piece. Basically, just a capacitor between the strip line and the output connector. Then, for this adjustment, there's a flapper thing underneath the ground potential, another cap that moves up and down between the strip line piece. Okay, so. This tube's a pain to get out, and it's a pain to line it up with the pins, but it's in. So, you bent the pins, like I said, and bent the back. So, um, I didn't know that this had been messed with. Um, so I put a diode across the coil, stopped the spike from going back into the radio. These coils are in parallel parallel with each other. Uh, it's re-secured to the back wall. The back wall isn't secured until these two top screws go in. Um, Resoldered the wire to the coil. These were loose, like big time loose, both sides. This is the most important one. This is the output coax, so tighten that up with pliers. Hey, so here's a um, crazy thing. Where is it? So, I go to test it and hook up a BNC connection for the input, and it won't plug in. I'm like, what's going on? The center pin of his BNC mail snapped off. See? So he wanted me to add a SO239, so I did. Four 632 screws, punched hole. I mean, enlarge the hole. That's good. So, um... Also, the 20 ohm, it's 20 ohm resistor they use. Is it 10 or 20? Um, yeah, pretty sure it's 20. But anyway, it's between the B negative and the chassis. It's not really a good idea to do that. It's not a good idea because if that were open, the B negative, B negative would be floating. So in this one, they actually put reverse connected diodes across it, but they were these little tiny ones. So I replaced them and put two 1N5408s reverse connected across it. So that's all set. Tried calibrating the grid current meter a bit. So there's a series glitch resistor already over there. And um, that's about it. You know, there was a lot of other things I did, you know, 
corrected that. I wanted to make sure the thermal delay relay worked properly because it's an indirect lead to cathode tube. You can't key it, you can't bias it on until at least 90 seconds goes by. So that was working, and I disconnected the B positive before. So I wanted to make sure everything make sure everything was correct before I even turned it on. You know, just flip a switch, check the diodes, check everything. So. Need an amp repaired, feel free to give me a call. No longer working on Henry's, I only took this in because I worked on it a long while back and if I had known it had been tinkered with, I would not have taken it in. So, um, thanks for watching. Websites are amprepairguy.com and also harbachelectronics.com. Please like, share, and subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. Next amp is a Dentron. Have a good night.